Greetings, whenever or wherever you are. Today, we have a wonderful story. My first story, as a matter of fact. This is the first part of a multi-part series of an overarching story called Feathers Asunder, a wonderful story by Northern Jir Falcon. Please enjoy. The mud was sticky and viscous. Every step she took became harder and harder as she moved forward. She looked over to her human companion, and to her annoyance, noticed that he seemed completely unfazed by it. His boots, as he called them, only sunk about an inch or two deep as he effortlessly lifted one foot after another. Sighing, she ruffled her outer feathers in a quick fashion. She wished now more than ever that her wings could carry her again. Tolerating this planet's high gravity was becoming more and more of a challenge and a chore. All she could manage now was a falling glide off a cliff. Emphasis on falling. She couldn't maintain any lift here, and not being able to fly away from danger was becoming increasingly dangerous. This was a death world, after all, and it's honestly been a miracle that she hasn't died yet. She supposed, realizing quite suddenly, that sticking with the human has been a bit of a blessing. What better way to survive on a death world than to live with a death worlder? That sounds insane. She thought somewhat shakily after realizing how that sounded. Swallowing shallowly, she took a steadying breath and continued plowing one mud-coated talon in front of the other. It was only after a couple of minutes of walking through the swamp that she started to feel tired. Her two main crown feathers on either side of her head slowly flattened as she noticed her legs started to shake from exhaustion. Looking to her left, she decided to check in with how the human was doing. Except she noticed with a shock that he wasn't actually beside her. Eyes widening, she looked back and forth somewhat frantically wondering how she had possibly lost him. But then she saw him, a couple of paces back behind her. He was standing still, just watching her with a cocked eyebrow. Trying to hide her short bout of panic and embarrassment, she unflattened her crown feathers in one swift flourish and set them at determined right angles on either side of her head. What? She demanded as assertive as she could after making eye contact with him, trying to put on a false sense of bravado. It didn't work. She sagged internally at that. She watched as his shoulders seemed to sink ever so slightly as he reached a powerful arm behind his head, scratching at it absently. He took a few easy strides towards her, his head angling down to keep eye contact with her. He was still as tall as ever, more than four times her height. He looked away for a split second before sighing, the air rushing out of his lungs in a gale. Cat, listen, the swamp goes on for about four miles, and we've barely gotten through the first one. I've been through this section before, and the mud doesn't really go away. Blinking, Katet looked down at the mud again. Her legs had sunk about a fourth of the way. She sagged, her wings almost touching and sinking down into the mud with her feet. I, uh, do you think we could take a little break? I just need a second to get my strength back. She asked hesitantly, fearing slightly that such a question might anger him. He glimpsed at the sky for a moment before returning his gaze to her, shaking his head slightly. I don't think we have the time. The sun is setting soon, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to sleep out here in this nasty swamp. And I sure as hell ain't laying down in the mud. He said, emphasizing the muck beneath his boots by shifting his weight from one foot to the other and raising them slightly. The thick liquid squelched loudly under his heavy weight. She nodded her head at that, the crown feathers reciprocating the gesture in a two-flap motion. She definitely had to agree. There would be no place to lay down as she wasn't willing to deal with cleaning the mud from her feathers. That would be a nightmare. But, if she was honest with herself at all, she wouldn't have the energy or the strength to continue the rest of the mile, much less the rest of the way. She sighed again, gazing down at her now drying mud-covered legs. She had barely been able to keep up with him thus far, and she knew somewhat bitterly that he had slowed down significantly for her sake these past couple of days. A creature as big and as powerful as him would easily be able to traverse this death world, almost as if taking a leisurely flight above the highlands. Why he'd even decided to stick with her so far, she'd probably never understand, and she had thoughts in the back of her mind that he still might do something to her. She tried her best not to think about it, but it was real all the same. He could enter in a heartbeat if he wanted to, and he wouldn't even have to use his jagged scrap blade to do it. His hands alone could squeeze the life out of her. Or snap the life out of her. Clenching her eyes tight, she tried to clear the disheartening thoughts about her dangerous companion. He had so far proven his word about not hurting her. He hadn't done a single thing to threaten her, not intentionally anyways. His gaze and his smile with all teeth would probably always make the feathers on her wings stand on end. But for a death worlder, she had to admit that he wasn't really all that bad. She shook her head to clear the rambling thoughts away. She had to focus. Her new companion was waiting on her to say something. But she had no idea what they were supposed to do now, or what she was supposed to say back. Perhaps some honesty, she thought. The Deathworlder, the human, had helped her so far. 
Just as she was about to tell him the truth that she couldn't really keep up for much longer, she suddenly felt something grip on either side of her wings. A jolt of an involuntary shiver went down her back as she felt individual digits wrap beneath her, weaving around her legs. She let out a squawking shriek as she was lifted off the ground and held between two powerful muscular arms. She struggled for a moment, but the insistent grip didn't give her any room, and she couldn't get her wings to open as they were pressed down to her sides. A few brief seconds of frantic struggling immediately made her realize that she didn't have the strength to escape his grip. Her heart sunk at that, and she began to shake uncontrollably in his arms, completely terrified. She couldn't move, couldn't speak, couldn't breathe. This is it. This is when he finally kills me. Or... She didn't dare to think about being devoured alive. She closed her eyes, squeezing them shut hard, unwilling to see her own end. Whoa, whoa, it's okay, it's okay, I promise. It's... Jesus, I'm not gonna hurt you, remember? The human said to her in a rush. Still shaking, she only barely just heard him in her terrified days. But somehow, some of the words did make it through, and she noticed that his grip on her was a little gentler as he held her to his chest. She blinked rapidly a few times, trying to understand what was happening and why she wasn't dead yet. Come on, Ked, if I wanted to hurt you, I would have done it by now. He said in a surprisingly quiet voice, one she had never heard from him before. Still... What he had said was unnerving and only seemed to make her shaking worse. Okay, maybe not the best thing to say. He mumbled to himself in a voice she could quite literally feel vibrating in the wall behind her. He let out a breath as he continued with that gentle voice. Katet, if we're going to make it through this swamp before sundown, I think it would be best if I just carry you the rest of the way. I mean, you weigh practically nothing. It wouldn't be a strain on me at all. She listened to his words, but she didn't like at all what he had said. Amongst her shaking, she somehow found her voice. Put me down. She said to the muscle-dense arms beneath her. Ket. I said put me down! She yelled, for the first time, right to his face as she whipped her head up to meet his eyes, neck feathers fluffing out in an angry frill of sharp blue. However, all gusto left her as soon as she noticed his expression, one which was both stern and unrelenting. No, Ket! He said in his deep voice, unmoving. She gulped at that, but as soon as he noticed the frightened look reappearing on her face, his gaze softened again. I'll put you down as soon as we make it out of this mud. Promise. He said, and then returned his gaze to the surroundings and started walking. Katette swiftly turned her head away from him, breathing quickly. For a while, she said nothing as she tried to resign herself to the degrading and still rather frightening situation. He was dead set on this. His eyes alone told her that. And the way he held her left no room for arguing. After a couple of moments to calm down, she finally got her shaking under control. It became obvious that he was very right about his earlier statement. If he really wanted to hurt her, he would have done it by now. She knew this, of course, but it was still hard to adjust to the fact that this Death Worlder wasn't everything she had learned about from the Galactic Net. And with all that aside, it still didn't give him the right to just pick her up like that. As more minutes passed, she began to relax slightly, since there was no use in being so tense about it now. She would have to deal with it the rest of the way, and even though he was making good distance, it would still take a bit of time before they reached the other side. Besides, the longer he held her, she found the easier it became to get comfortable. She didn't really notice it until now, but he was actually very gentle with holding her, something she didn't think he was capable of. She had seen his large manipulating talons, no, hands, work before, and she had seen him break entire tree branches in their grips effortlessly, had seen him wield the scrap blade with a swing strong enough to decimate the indigenous predatory fauna of this world. So she had no desire to fully understand their capability in the beginning. But maybe she had misjudged him for some brute. He clearly had plenty of grace, as seen by his stride along the ever-changing terrain, and even now through the thick mud. And as he held her, she didn't feel any pressure that was painful, just an insistent grip that held her to his chest comfortably. Katet took a few minutes to take it all in. Maybe this wasn't as bad as she thought, and the chest behind her radiated with such warmth against the chilling atmosphere. Finally, she relaxed genuinely in his arms, the fear finally dissipating into nothing for the first time. She risked a slight glance above her, trying to catch his eyes, his expression. As soon as she did, though, she regretted it. He had one of those smirks, and it made her crown flutter agitatedly. She had found that a smirk was usually a bad sign of something. What's got you smirking now? I've dealt with this solution so far without any more complaints, he said grumpily. His smile widened at that as he let out a burst of air through his nose. Nothing, nothing, he said as his chest rumbled in a deep chuckle beside her. It's just, you kind of look like my nephew after a temper tantrum. I'll fire power and energy one moment, and the next I'll tuck her out, he said finally, turning his gaze down to meet her eyes. His smile, she noticed, seemed to reach his eyes as the skin creased at the edges. She really was no judge for human expression, and his smile still scared her featherless most of the time. But she had no doubt that this was probably the first time she had really seen him truly smile. 
and she realized just then that she wasn't afraid of this smile, not even a little. And she didn't know what to think about that. Not afraid of a death whirler? Perhaps she was already losing her mind, being stranded on this planet. What's with the feather dance? The human questioned as he watched her crown feathers undulate in a weird sequential fashion, the iridescent colors catching what little sunlight was still peeking through the dilapidated swamp-like trees. The feathers settled instantly. What? She asked dumbly, her beak hanging open slightly. Your head feathers, they were moving up and down all crazy-like. He replied, a tint of humor still in his voice. Blinking once, then twice, she let out a weary sigh. A bit embarrassed, she said, I suppose I do that when I'm thinking about something that is usually shocking. I've been told it is disrespectful, though. I apologize. She closed her eyes and nodded her head once, sincerely. The human merely cocked his head to the side once. No worries. I don't take any offense. I was just wondering what it meant. I haven't met many of the Alliance species yet. I've only met one other of your kind before, and, well, the conversation didn't really get anywhere. He trailed off before mumbling. It never really even started to begin with. He finished with half-lidded eyes. She perked slightly at that, totally blocking out the rest of his statement after hearing that he had met one of her kind before. Oh, so you have met one of my kind before? He leveled his gaze back to the horizon for a moment. He seemed hesitant, which she thought was odd. The human hardly hesitated about anything. I didn't really meet the guy, per se. It was more like a... Like a... He fumbled with his words for a second before sighing. After taking one look at me, he flew off before I could even get the chance to talk to him, he admitted. Oh. Katet said quietly. It became a bit awkward after that, but she felt a determination to fix it, and fix it fast. Well... She began slowly, shifting in his arms slightly, not realizing that he had loosened his grip so much that she had started slipping right out of his grasp. He was very quick to catch her, though. Death roll, their reflexes are crazy, she thought with wide eyes. Whoa, that was close. Sorry about that. He said as he held her up to his chest again, his hold a bit more firm. After readjusting slightly in his grip, she noticed with a shock that she was actually getting mud all over his clothes. Her taloned feet, which were still caked in mud, were now staining his shirt. Your shirt? She blurted suddenly. I'm sorry, I got mud all over your clothes. She said regretfully while glancing up at him. Surprisingly, he gave a little grunt of a chuckle at that. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's just some dirt, I can wash it off later. She couldn't help a bit of relief that rushed over her, but as she watched him, his expression seemed to slacken into a slight frown. She was very familiar with that expression at this point, and it wasn't a good one. She worried for a moment that maybe he really did care about the ruined shirt. But the words he spoke next, she never could have guessed. Hey, look. He began. Sorry about grabbing you earlier, alright? He met her eyes for that single admission before averting them back to the horizon. I just... Humans are seen as this evil, super powerful death world, do you know? I knew you wouldn't really like it if I offered to carry you, even if I asked, so I just took the initiative. I understand if you don't agree with my decision, but you know very well by now that being caught out at night without any decent cover is never good, let alone having to deal with this mud. He said somewhat distastefully to the ground. I could tell that you were having trouble trying to get through it. He finished gently. She didn't know what to say. She was both touched and surprised by the stream of words. The longer she had spent with this human, the more her opinions drastically changed about him. If most humans were like this one, then the Alliance was certainly wrong about this species. There was definitely more there than the Death World label entailed. Much more. She felt something stir within her at that thought. Was she really becoming friends with this human? Friends with a Death Worlder? Huh. Who would have thought? There you go again with the feather dance, he said, interrupting her inner thoughts as he smirked. She flared her undulating feathers out in irritation, squirming a little in his arms again. It's not a feather dance, she quoted back in annoyance. He only laughed at that for a good moment before relenting a little, trying to catch his breath. All right, all right. He let loose a few more residual chuckles. You're pretty sprightly when you want to be, that's for sure. She only grumbled to herself at that, but she wasn't really mad. Not at all, really. In fact, she was still reeling over the previous revelation, and if sitting in his arms, as calm as ever, was anything to go by, she knew that something had changed between them this time. She peeked one more glance above her, catching the underside of his chin. He seemed to notice her staring and looked back down at her as well. He took this moment to frill her feather crown out slightly, the deep purple iridescence coming out in full. Now what does that mean? He said with genuine confusion. The purple rippled for a moment in the fading sunlight before settling back to normal as she gave another close-eyed single nod. That is how my people give thanks, she stated simply. To her surprise, his face seemed to change color at that. 
It turned a light shade of red, and he looked away swiftly. Humans have iridescence, too? She cocked her head at that. And what does that mean? She said with a bit of reciprocal humor, knowing full well that she was now teasing a Death Worlder. Normally, a dangerous endeavor, but she wasn't afraid this time. He breathed out of his nose in a loud gust before shaking his head. Absolutely nothing. She squinted suspiciously. It obviously meant something, and she was going to get to the bottom of it. That's not fair. Every time you have a question, I am pretty open to answering it, despite my hesitance. She tried reasoning. He shook his head, the mysterious shade of red in his face slowly fading away. A small smile slowly returned to his face as he watched her frill start puffing up again. Jeez, no need to get your feathers in a twist about it. Twist? She almost shrieked. Perhaps becoming friends with this human was going to be a bit more of a challenge after all. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun making it and am really looking forward to making more of them in the future. If there are any other stories you'd like to hear, please do let me know and I'll see if I can get in contact with the author and we'll see if we can make that happen. And thank you very much again for watching. And please remember to look up and seek the stars.